Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the next gen racing faster BMW M4 Racing League on Sundays. It's round number nine, the penultimate round of season 20 and I'm your host as always Paul TX141 Walsh, also known as Brit in the Spit. Now today we're in Japan for the penultimate round at Fuji International Speedway. And for those of you who are observant, you'll have noted that going into this round there was no announcement on what the circuit would be. That's because it was driver's choice. Our drivers were expected to vote on two circuits, a choice of two circuits, one being picked by a driver from Top Split, either the split that we're looking at, which consists of the Alien League and the Division 1 drivers, and then a circuit being picked from Division 2, which is being broadcast by another member of the Next Gen Racing team and not by myself. Now with that in mind, of course, the two circuits that were picked were Fuji International Speedway and Dragon Trail Seaside in reverse. And the vote was incredibly tight, but by a single vote in the end, Fuji International Speedway was the circuit that was picked. And as a result, we're here tonight for what is expected to be some rather tactical racing in the fact that Fuji is a circuit which comprises of a very contrasting set of corners and features. Now, one of the most notable things about Fuji, and you can see it on the circuit map in the middle of your screen, is the fact that this circuit has an incredibly long start-finish straight, one of the longest on the GT Sport race circuit available, and indeed with uh, the longest straights that we've had on the race calendar to date. Put that all together, and what it effectively means is we're in a situation whereby we have got a straight where a lot of slipstream can occur, and indeed that will be vital in both qualifying and in the race. It will be all tactical with regards to drivers position themselves well to get the drag down in towards turn number one, or the drag across the finish line on the final lap. But then you also have some rather odd sectors. Sector 1 is literally at the start finish straight plus a hairpin. Sector 2 is all about medium speed handling. And Sector 3 is where we have got a complete mixture of low to medium speed handling corners starting off, of course, with the turn 10 hairpin. And then we've got a variety of corners after that, which will test our driver's ability to handle their BMW M4s with respect to undulations, change of the camber, low speed cornering, etc, etc. And it all ends with turn number 6. 16 where you've got the very wide corner known as Panasonic Corner where a lot of overtaking can occur and some rather daring lunges can also result in passes or indeed instance between drivers. Now coming on to our drivers, we've only got six drivers in the lobby at the moment, but we are expected to be approximately filled up to about 11 drivers in all, and we're going to take you through the standings very shortly. But whilst we are waiting to get underway, I just want to make a quick word about our sponsor, Be Faster, or Faster in short. They are a company which is looking to get more and more people into a motorsport, whether it be in the real world or in the virtual world of sim racing, trying to encourage as many people as possible from all different walks of life and all different ages to get involved in motorsport, whether it be at the career level, level or at the hobby level they're looking to spread the word of motorsport and increase the interest motorsport has been a growing industry over the last 50 years if not a greater period of time but particularly in the last two decades motorsport has grown massively albeit we could say that we could make it the last three decades if you want to talk about the peak years of british touring car and also formula one for example but again that's debatable but what we can say is the momentum and the tide for motorsport is continuing to turn in favor of the overall type for sport and the hobby and the interest is growing and be faster wants to be at the top of that so if you do want to check them out be sure to visit befaster.com or search faster as spelled f-a-s-t-r on google and you'll be able to take a look at the work they do and they're the sponsor for this series but without further ado then let's get down to the track and start to introduce our drivers one by one of course keeping in mind that we do have a limited number of drivers here right now so we might have to take a few steps back well, of course, we start off by introducing our Alien League drivers. Now, last time out, though it wasn't mentioned, we can say and confirm that the Alien League was wrapped up in terms of who the championship winner is, and that is the British driver right here, Sparks Fury. Sparks having a dominant run of form at Catalonia in a very difficult round for Titi in race number two where it looked as though Luke Mitchell was just about to hold off Sparks to pick up the win but in the end Sparks really has been the tour de force throughout the entirety of the season in the Alien League and picking up another pair of back-to-back -back wins plus also the fastest lap in race number one and Sparks as a result now on 322 points it is mathematically impossible for any of his rivals to be able to catch up to him as I understand it come at the end of tonight so as a result 
Sparks has run away with this and is now the Alien League champion. It is confirmed going into this round, so the pressure's off of him. But I'm sure Sparks would have been being a very competitive driver and somebody who is always seeking to go just that little bit faster and improve. He's a perfectionist at heart, as indeed a number of our drivers are. He'll be looking to try and conclude this season with another pair of wins tonight and then two more wins come the final round in a week's time. Now behind him, meanwhile, we do have MMR Luke Mitchell, who is not currently at trackside, but is making his way over, we believe. And Luke Mitchell, currently sat on 223 points, is now our second place man in the Alien League. And that is the big question for the Alien League, who is going to finish in P2? Will it be Luke Mitchell or will it be TNR Philo? Now Philo wasn't able to participate last week and he's on 199 points in P3 in the Alien League. And we believe he may be making his presence known and felt tonight. So we look forward to seeing what TNR Philo is able to achieve should he arrive down the circuit. I then have to make a, a brief aside to say apologies for the fact that unfortunately GTP Rick WRX will not be participating tonight due to a personal clash and as a result we wish, wish Rick well of course we wish all of our drivers who aren't able to participate all the best in whatever they're doing instead but Rick will not be participating tonight and is currently a P4 after round number eight in the standings of the Alien League on 157 points, having been able to pick up 15 points in what was race number one, but unfortunately having that DNF in at race number two at Catalonia last time out. And Philo not being able to race last time in round eight, we look forward to seeing what he's able to do and looking to take the flight to Luke Mitchell should the pair of them arrive at circuit. Our fifth driver as well, Luke Doherty in the Alien League, is not able to participate this evening either, again due to a personal clash. So as a result, we wish Luke Doherty well. He is currently fifth place in the Alien League on 104 points. Not able to take part last week either, but we're hoping perhaps we may see him in the final round of the season. But we will wait and see. Then we come on to our Division 1 drivers, and this is where things are getting very spicy, and it could be the case come tonight. We crown our Division 1 champion in the form of this man here, Matthew Lambert from the United Kingdom. Now, last time out, Matthew Lambert was able to pick up a good point, so what with the win in a race number one at Catalonia, but then it was a very difficult race number two, and in fact, it didn't go too well at all for Matthew in the fact that he only picked up 13 points from race number two, and the net result of that was that... He is still in a championship fight with Martin Jalo 9 albeit Martin right now, who is at the circuit as well, and here is, well, that's not Martin, my sincere apologies. This is Martin right here, the British driver making his way out of turn number 12 right now into the final sector. The British driver, currently sat on 242 points, is 33 points behind Matthew Lambert. So if Matthew Lambert is able to outscore Martin tonight and be able to make that points gap go up to 46 points, then Martin mathematically will not be able to challenge for the championship win in Division 1 come the final round next week. But of course, if Martin can close that gap down or keep it as it is or stop it from getting over 46 points, then we have a championship fight that will go into the final round. So that is Martin's job tonight. He's on those 242 points. He needs to try and close that gap wherever possible to Matthew Lambert. Matthew being on 275 points, but the favourite to win the Division 1 championship as of this season, as it stands right now. But it could all change over the course of tonight's two races. You've then got a sizable gap down to P3 in the Division 1 standings, and that is held by Sir Bertus, the Dutchman on 193 points, unable to take part tonight, unfortunately, due to a clash in personal circumstances, but wish Bertus all the best. On none of those 193 points, he will be caught up somewhat by Edge HJG, who is fourth at the moment with 160 points. Edge and not here, the British driver we are expecting to arrive at the circuit in short order. You've then got to go a further, what is, five points down to P5 in Division 1, and that is held by DCAR16 on 155 points. And again, DCAR's not currently present in the lobby, but we are expecting him to turn up sometime during qualifying, and he will be starting from the back of the field in race number one. At least that's the expectation. You've then got Deskyver, who's currently in P6 in the overall standings for Division 1. The British driver here making his way up towards turn 15 right now. And what you can see with Deskyver in that wonderful Union Jack style livery there, the combination of red, white and blue as he makes his way through the final corner right now. Panasonic corner, of course, and onto that start finish straight. He wasn't able to take part in last week's rounds at Catalonia and so on 150 points. He's only five down on Decast and a further five down on Edge. So we could potentially see Deskyver jump all the way up into P4 come the end of tonight's racing if he plays his cards right and it has been a season for Deskyver to work on a little bit and he has improved over the course of the season and he'll be looking to build some more momentum tonight as we go into the finale for next week 
You've then got only three points behind him, the driver who arrived midway through the season, and that is Naif running a slightly modified Red Bull racing livery tonight on his BMW M4. The British driver has really been a shining star in Division 1, having joined, having joined us back at Sardinia effectively, or just before Sardinia at the midpoint of the season. Naif has really shone and taken to the circuit and really made a name for himself racing in Division 1. In the fact, on 147 points right now, he is well within arm's reach of challenging for P4 in the Drivers' Championship for Division 1 come the end of tonight. But of course, to get there, he's got to put in those results and we hope he's able to do so given his run of form. He has been the most consistent Division 1 driver outside of our top two over the course of the races since he joined. Will he be able to keep that consistency up? We then got to go a little way down to P8 in Division 1, and that is held up by Gino Demmer, who is our trackside steward today and our race lobby host, taking over the the hobby, sorry, the lobby hosting duties once again. Gino right now, the Hispania Racing F1 team supporter, as we can see on the back of the car there, and racing for Hispania Racing on 120 points, and unfortunately had two DNFs at Catalonia, unfortunately not able to make it to the end of the races, and on those 120 points, he will be looking to get some points on the board and potentially get himself back into what is currently a four-way fight for P4 in the Division 1 standings. And then last but not least, not currently at trackside, is D10 Piper on 116 points, unable to participate last week, and we're hopeful that Piper is able to make it to trackside for the round of races at Fuji. Now, we do have the best part of eight minutes to go before we get underway with qualifying, of course. And with that in mind, we're going to be shortly giving you an overview of the circuit. As we just double check with race control, whether we're hearing anything with regards to the statuses of our drivers. Nothing so far. So I believe that everything is set to go. We're just waiting for more individuals to arrive. So let's talk a little bit about Fuji Speedway then. And why this is a circuit which a number of our drivers were looking forward to racing at and others not so much. Now, Fuji Speedway is a circuit which has seen multiple disciplines race here over the few decades. Formula One in the 1970s, for example, the most memorable race being when we had the old 1970s layout, being the race that decided the championship fight between Nicky Lauda and James Hunt in 1975, if my history serves me correctly. I may be out by a year there, but feel free to correct me. But on top of that, Fuji Speedway is a circuit that features in a lot of Japanese series in Super Formula, for example, and most notably in the GT2 type, type series, or Super GT as it's known. It is a track with a variety of aspects to it, but of course its very long start finish straight is perhaps the key one. And as we jump on board with Sparks Fury here, he's going to give you a lap around the circuit and we'll get a feel for what exactly it's all about. Now it's going to look very sedate, Sparks making his way across the timeline to go on to another lap as he goes all the way down towards turn one, getting up to a speed of what is going to be approximately 155 miles an hour before he breaks down into turn one in seventh gear, breaking at approximately 120 meters there from the corner and turning it in on the apex nicely before planting the throttle and straight line it out towards the exit curb. And now through turn two, a simple right-hander. Now turn three, a very difficult corner here, Coca-Cola corner. It's essentially a blind apex in the fact you cannot see the apex when you're sat there in the cockpit. And even with the bumper camera, we can't see it, but he makes his way through the corner very nicely. Now turns four and five, the double right-hander here as he makes his way through what is known as 100R. Turns four and five, coming through turn five effectively now and up into the braking zone for turn number six. A deep corner here the hairpin style corner of turn six and as he makes his way through you've got the full out left hander here the additional kink which is classified as turn number seven and now he's got the two right handers turns eight and nine completely flat out here he's going to be building up speed for the turn 10 hairpin also known as dunlop corner as he comes down going underneath the dunlop billboards there and dunlop billboards on the right breaking down to the hairpin coming all the way down to second gear balancing it on the brakes and now turning through turn 11 and turn 12 the chicane that's been set up we're running the full layout here the current layout for fuji speedway and now going into turn 13 the final sector now the most technical sector out of the three and we can see as he makes his way up the hill through turn 14 into the very stark left hand here coming down through the gears to second gear for turn 15 next corner and now turn 16 the final corner panasonic corner you can see how wide the circuit is here and how you want to take a deep entry line and rotate the corner across the apex curb before planting that throttle as you go through that camber change up here as well and now he's got the long run down towards the start finish line that is a lap in the eyes of sparks fury and it's worth noting how really the final sector is a huge contrast to the rest of the circuit. Whereas the first two sectors have a much higher average speed. It's that final sector where that average speed comes crashing down as we jump away from the onboarder Sparks. And we're grateful for him showing us. And as a result of that, our drivers have to deal with that contrast. And remember that the final sector rewards a more disciplined approach. Whereas the opening two sectors are all go, go, go. And that's what our drivers will need to be aware of. But there's plenty of overtaking opportunities down into turn one. Not really into turn three here. Here at Coca-Cola Corner, it's not an ideal 
two overtaking spot there. You'll see some drivers trying to fake overtakes in order to put the driver ahead of them off. And then you've got the long run up towards turn six, where if you're close enough, you can overtake on the inside into turn six. But then you're vulnerable in the long run through turn seven all the way down to turn ten for a re-attempt. As we see Matthew Lambert coming in here, you can see he's all the way over to the left-hand side. So that is on the racing line. But drivers who want to go for an overtake will cut right down the inside there. And as he comes through turn seven, he's got that long run down towards turn ten. A typical overtake in this space turn number 10 here and you'll see that the circuit is really wide and it encourages overtaking particularly in gt4 class cars which we're running here of course and now he's coming through the hairpin and the subsequent chicane sector three not really a place to do overtakes other than the final corner due to the width of the circuit up to the final corner but turn 16 panasonic corner is a huge overtaking opportunity and we can see that lambert right now getting himself parked up there and get ready to go without i think making a little bit of a mistake there and putting the hazards on instead but D10 Piper, we can confirm to you, he is just making his way into lobby very shortly, so he should be with us in the next four minutes. But we do still have a number of drivers who are due to arrive for qualifying, so we are hopeful that they are going to arrive, but we will wait and see. Now, the other reasons why this circuit is sometimes seen as a bit of a voodoo circuit for some drivers is the fact that in GT Sport in particular, we do have a thing known as the curb glitch, which can affect the way the car runs across the circuit. Now, it only applies to one corner in particular. I've experienced it myself, and many drivers will talk about it, as we see Martin there deciding to do a little bit of rally cross. And Disguiver, as he takes us around, will be able to show us where the curb glitch is. It's on turn number three. It's the exit curb coming out of turn three, whereby when the car goes over the curb, particularly over the dipped part of the curb, and you'll see that the curb is slanted to a point, as the car goes through the dip, it can trigger the car to essentially bounce off the curb and go into a spin. It'll just trigger random snap over steer, and I believe it is an attempt to try and model the ground and effect where the bottom of the car has hit the curb by going over it, and as a result, that would hit that would cause the car to lose control. However, the way it's implemented is GT Sport seems to be quite inconsistent, albeit it's not a criticism of the game, it's an observation. And as a result of that, our drivers refer to it as the curb glitch and the fact that the curb is very dangerous dangerous and it's sometimes a little bit of a luck as to whether you're safe it's that curve right there which the sky has just touched but you can see there he was rather sensitive to it and not running deep across the curb in order to avoid being a victim of it there are multiple curb glitches in gt sport there's ones at the red bull ring and also at brands hatch gp but the one here is one of the most noted ones for the fact that it can cause the car to go flying off a circuit out of turn three when you least expect it as we see luke mitchell has just arrived albeit he should be ready up shortly and if you give us two seconds, ladies and gentlemen, we're just checking in with race control. And everything seems to be moving. Moving as planned as Luke Mitchell arrives at the circuit, our current P2 driver in the standings for the Alien League. Mr. Mitchell now just getting himself out on the circuit and getting himself warmed up. We have only got a minute to go until the expected time for qualifying to start, but we may delay that very slightly due to the fact that uh, we have some drivers who are still on their way. So we will wait and see. But Mitchell right now, after what was a brilliant run of form at Catalonia, looking to replicate that form tonight. And with a reduced grid as well, great opportunity to get some points on the board here and push forward to secure that P2 in the Alien League standings come the end of tonight. As we see, he's just having a little bit of fun with the throttle right now. I think Luke just getting himself nicely warmed up there and testing out his throttle pedal. Now, of course, if you are tuning in right now, be sure to say hello in the Twitch chat if you have access to it. Don't be shy. Feel free to say hi. Don't buy it. And I hope you've had a good weekend and you're looking forward to the week ahead as it's the final week of May before we start to get into the summer months. Albeit in the United Kingdom here right now, it's absolutely chucking it down. And as a result, I don't think we're looking towards a fantastic summer, although the weather's meant to be getting better over the course of the next week. So be sure to let me know what you're thinking about the weather for the summer ahead and also who you're rooting for tonight in terms of our racing here at Fuji Speedway as we see Martin right now on a personal best and I believe Sparks Fury doing a little bit of shenanigans driving backwards around the circuit and we do know that a number of drivers like to experiment with driving around some of these real world circuits backwards to see what it's like if you were to do the circuit in reverse and some of them can be some quite interesting combinations indeed Fuji Speedway being quite an odd combination as well in reverse 
But as we continue to wait, we are going to see that after the qualifying session, we will have the lobby crash effectively where everybody is expected to quit. So that way we can set up the grid properly. But qualifying is going to be getting underway very shortly. We are, there's D10 Piper. So we are going to have eight drivers racing tonight out of our expected hall of what is, if I remember correctly. In fact, I can check my notes here. We are expecting to have Eleven drivers maximum out of the drivers who have announced whether they are taking part or have not made an announcement. Of course, we have three drivers who are not able to take part, as confirmed earlier. We can see that Matthew Lambert saying that he needs to take a quick bathroom break and Gino getting a little bit impatient there. And indeed, right at the uh, final moment there, as we see that Luke Mitchell's pretty much saying to Matthew Lambert, we'll just completely ghost your car out during qualifying. And, well, Lambert was very fast there and coming back immediately. So, um... Unless he's playing in his toilet, which he may be. You never know. But again, we'll leave that one down to him. As we introduce D10 Piper, he's arrived at the circuit in a brand new livery tonight. And one that is focused on, I believe, American NASCAR. A very lovely livery there. Can't remember the exact driver, but he did mention that in the pre-race briefing. He'd be running a new livery tonight. And that is a very fetching livery indeed. With the Chicken Pit sponsorship there. And we look forward to seeing what D10 Piper is able to achieve tonight. What of him only being on 70 points right now in the overall standings. And in the Alien League on 116. And looking to get some good points on the board. But qualifying is about to get underway then, ladies and gentlemen. Ten minutes. Who's going to be on the front row for each league by the end of it? Let's find out. So as all of our drivers begin to take to the circuit, then they'll be looking to get out there as soon as possible and get themselves set up. The big question in qualifying, of course, will be what tactic can we expect from our drivers? Well... Fuji is known as a slipstream circuit. It is one of those circuits where the corners by the final sector, pardon me, are not overly punishing in terms of you're running in the dirty air. Particularly in cars which have low aerodynamic downforce, i.e. grip provided by the downforce rather than the tyres. And as a result of that, we will see a lot of drivers form up into a train, although Spark seems to be leading that train at the moment and going to be at the head of the pack, doing a little bit of warming up of the tyres there, coming out of turn two up towards Coca-Cola corner. And now they all make their way into 100R. But the big question will be, who is going to be at the head of the train and be willing to be there? And who will want to be in the middle at the back of the train to get the toe because having the toe around this circuit is going to be worth approximately one second in terms of lap time if you absolutely nail it but what we can see is that d10 piper at the head of the train martin luke mitchell all of them piling in behind him right now and then matthew lambert in the middle of that train seemingly trying to find his position right now and i think that's what we're going to expect drivers are going to look to use the slipstream over the course of that we saw that at catalonia and it didn't work out for a number of drivers in qualifying and some of them were quite heavily punished for it in terms of tripping over one another but tonight I do think that could be the case that slipstream is the way to go although I think Sparks might be going for qualifying without the slipstream just so that way he's simply got the clear air and can put in a solid lap and Sparks has been the one to dictate the pace in qualifying as well so it's only natural one would say that he is looking to do the lap independently of everyone we see all our drivers now coming into the final corner into Panasonic corner and they all make their way around onto a lap and this will give you a feel for what it's like as we jump on board with D10 Piper for his opening flying lap as he makes his way down towards the timeline and you could see in his review mirror already that Martin Jal 9 is getting ever closer to the back of him and using that toe being pulled along right now and I believe he is going to switch out and actually jump ahead of him you'll see him on the right hand side of your screen as he starts to come by there is Martin and we're now going to jump to Martin Jal 9 who is at the head of the train although it looks as though D10 Piper has come alongside him and we stay with Martin for the time being who's at the head of the train it's almost as if they're having a little bit of a race rather than qualifying but Martin getting a good turn one there although it was compromised due to the fact he had to take a quite tight line by comparison with natural racing line he now makes his way through turn three and you can see here being very sensitive to riding out on that curb before going into 100R nicely hooked up here you see he's balancing the throttle no need to use the brake for either turn four or turn five just using the throttle to stabilize the car now coming up into six the hairpin corner here and using that downshift to third gear there to rotate the rear of the car in as we see that Luke Mitchell has spun out in the rear of your camera shot there not sure what's happened to Luke. We'll find out very shortly why that happened. I think got on the power a little too aggressively on exit. But now coming down towards turn 10, we stay with Martin for the time being into the Dunlop corner, of course. 
on the Dunlop hairpin and coming all the way down through the gears going a little bit deep off of the apex curve there just seemingly not being able to get the car stopped just quite as rapidly as he would have liked but nonetheless it still got stopped in the end and as he comes through turn 13 you'll see here he's got to be very careful of how the car flows through 13 and up into 14 he doesn't want to take too much of the astro turf for 14 as he makes his way through 15 now and again a challenge of balancing the throttle and exit and building up the throttle now into 16 to complete the lap here it's a good lap by martin as he comes out of the final corner that's the long run down to the start finish line to complete the lap and we will see that the indicative pace is being set by sparks it is what is going to be by looks of things a one minute 44 i suspect a 44.6 and what has martin been able to achieve it is a 45.2 d10 piper with the 47.5 gino immediately jumping up as is matthew lambert both of them at 47.1 for gino and lambert on a 47.2 then we have got nafe who is coming across the line right now and this is looking as though it's a precursor to an actual flying lap and luke mitchell also jumping back to the pits there so so far sparks theory on provisional pole with 44.6 and martin on provisional pole for league one with what is a 45.2 but of course will Matthew Lambert be able to respond but let's take a look at what happened to Luke Mitchell who's gone out for another outlap as we do see somebody getting it very wrong there coming out to turn one Naif getting a little bit too wide on exit onto the raised astro turf so I think what we're going to see here as they come up towards Hairpin Corner at Turn 6, Luke Mitchell, I think he's going to just get a little bit too heavy on the brakes. Or was there some contact between himself D10? No, a bit too heavy on the brakes. In fact, understeered himself under braking onto the grass on entry, and that's what caused him to spin there. And that's why the things about Fuji as well, it's a very wide circuit, and it does encourage you to use the full width of the circuit. But if you get greedy with the curves, you'll find yourself tapping the grass, and then it is literally a case of say goodbye to that lap because the grass will punish you. We've only got half of the qualifying session now left to go but already all of our drives really started to put in laps and Sparks has got the toe of Luke Mitchell ahead of him and perhaps he's trying to utilise it here to set an even faster lap that will be out of everybody's reach we will wait and see of course as all of our drives make their way round once again and Sparks right now doing a very impressive job indeed as we've lost the fastest lap time there but I can tell you that Sparks right now holds on to that fastest lap with 44.6 as wide drives are making their way through. Martin Jallo 9 coming across the line again, and I suspect this is going to be a 44. It's an improvement. It's a 45.1, so it's an improvement by a tenth and a half, but there's still plenty of time out there as Matthew Lambert now starts to tighten the noose a little bit around Martin's provisional pole lap. A 145.186, only six hundredths behind Martin is Mr. Lambert. These two drivers really exchanging the lap times, and the Sky improving to a 46.5 there. That's an impressive improvement, but Nafe improving a little bit more, a 46.2. Two. In fact, that's his first proper flying lap, and Nafe is making it count there up into a provisional P4 overall, and that is P3 in the Division 1 standings. But right now, Luke Mitchell really needs to find a lap as he's going out onto one, but he has, he has got a little bit of traffic. Although Nafe immediately moving out of the way, and I think Mitchell's going to be very happy with that one. Although he's got Sparks behind him, and of course Sparks will try to put a little bit of pressure on him to go even faster, but that's more for the slipstream rather than for trying to make Mitchell make a mistake. Sparks staying behind, but we focus on Mitchell for the time in as he comes up into turn six. Does he nail it this time under braking? He does indeed, using a downshift to second there to help him get the rotation onto the apex curve. There are two lines to the turn six hairpin. You can either go a little bit deep and not hit the apex curve in third gear, or you can use the the downshift to second to run across the apex curve the former being technically the faster line overall but the latter being the more aggressive line that gives you the defensive capabilities in the race and Mitchell going for that more aggressive defensive line as we do see he goes a bit deep out of 11 and that compromises his line for 12 but now as he comes up into 13 he backs out of it with Sparks behind him there deciding this is not an ideal lap and instead he tucks in behind Sparks to try and use him for a little bit of slipstream on his next qualifying lap so this will not be an indicative lap from the British driver of Mitchell but we suspect he's got two laps to go and him and Sparks both queuing up here and I think Sparks is also trying to give him a little bit of toe as Martin improves to a 44.9 there as he comes across the line. So it's his first entry into the 44s. Two drives in the 44s right now. As we see, Discover improves to a 46.4. And as a result of that, now starting to make his presence felt in the midfield of the qualified session, albeit he's still two tenths down on Nath, but he is two tenths clear of 
uh, D10 Piper as we see Luke Mitchell setting a 47.2 the slowest lap of anybody so far and Gino in the pit not looking to put in another lap at this point I think he feels that's probably the best lap he'll get at 47.0 or opting to not worry about qualifying and focus on the race perhaps given the fact that around here the slipstream is going to be a key factor in the race just as much as being up front in qualifying but we can see right now that Mitchell is using Sparks as his pace car and Sparks pretty much giving him the pace car tow all the way round but will Mitchell be able to stay behind Sparks he's the fastest in sector one of anybody as we perhaps expect with all this slipstream going on but as he comes down into turn six will he be able to nail the hairpin he uses a snap down shift to second gear to give himself the rotation across the apex curve there and with one and a half minutes remaining he will have one more lap as Martin Janline has parked up on the exit of seven there and as a result of that Martin I think will feel that he's done the best possible lap he can Mitchell not the fastest in the second sector of everybody but still a good lap from Mitchell so far he is a tenth up remember he backed out here in sector three so we are expecting potentially a 44 or a low 50, uh, 45 from Mitchell as we look back to Matthew Lambert he comes through the final quarter right now taking a little bit too much apex curve there and that launches him onto the exit Astro turf but he keeps the throttle in and keeps the steering straight brave stuff from Lambert many have fallen to that raised Astro turf and as he makes his way across the line is it enough to improve here or will it be a case that he's still got to find more out on circuit it is an improvement to a 45.0 he's a tenth now off of Martin but what can Mitchell do he's on a personal best as he comes down towards the start finish line what is this going to be from the British driver he's had sparks time all the way around the circuit for the entire lap it is a 44.7 so that puts him P2 in the Alien League a tenth off of sparks right now so currently the two you're looking at on screen are going to be on the front row of the Alien League and I believe they are the only two Alien League drivers racing tonight so they've got a league of their own and there is the case that Martin is still going to be on that front row albeit he's got 20 seconds to go but he's doing weaving on the straight here so I think he's actually coming to the end of a lap and not going to go for one more I think this is just a casual foray around the circuit but Lambert has got to find some time on his final qualifying lap right now he will be the first driver to make his way all the way around to complete his final qualifying lap can he snatch pole position off of Martin Jallo 9 I think if he's going to he's got to find it in the final sector he comes down to the timing line here and he is three and a half temps down already on his previous best so Lambert I do not think he's going to be able to snatch this unless he can pull some sort of magic out of the bag with a, an incredible final sector never say it's impossible of course ladies and gentlemen but finding three and a half temps and then a further temp in the final sector is actually half a second unless Lambert has made some mistakes on one of the corners here I don't think it's going to happen instead he might be now practicing some of the lines around here for the race in terms of defensive and overtaking lines as we see he comes through the final corner then if through Panasonic he goes and downs that start finish straight will Lambert be able to improve I don't think it's going to be possible he's got a long run now and we'll wait and see as behind him we have still got drivers who are coming through as we've also got drivers parked up down at turn one knowing their qualifying session is over and Lambert comes across the line here and it is not an improvement in the end so Lambert will be starting P2 in Division 1 as we see Describer coming across the line can he improve and potentially pip Nate sorry pit knife I should say he does not but he does improve by one and a half temps a good improvement there and Luke Mitchell comes across the line not improving what about D10 Piper I believe he's coming through the final corner right now well I believe this lap is down he's made a mistake somewhere so this is not going to be an improving lap and this is the final lap we are going to complete in terms of flying laps but D10 Piper right now will be starting on the back row with Gino Demmer in the League One group. or Sorry, Division One group, I should say. As we see that Sparks and Mitchell will have that front row to themselves. D10 Piper coming across the line. So with 30 seconds to go, our qualifying order is as follows, ladies and gentlemen. Pole position once again goes to Sparks Fury. One tenth ahead of Luke Mitchell. They, of course, as the Alien League will be locking out the front row. And in pole position for Division 1, it goes to Martin Jallo 9 with a 44.970. A brilliant lap there from the British driver and setting his intentions clear to Matthew Lambert, his championship rival and the favourite in the championship who was only in the end eight hundredths off of him. Nath Disguiver D10 Piper and Gino following. So with that, we're now going to get a quick stop check underway and then we will be setting the grid order for race number one. So expect race number one to come within the next five to ten minutes. But this is an opportunity for our drivers to see if they can launch off the grid, of course, and also give them a feel for what it's like in the rundown to turn one off of the standing start. And it is a long run down towards turn number one. It should be pointed out it looks a short run on the circuit map. Well, some drives immediately quitting out. But I think 
the majority of them will want to get that standing start in. Five red lights, and there we go. All of our drivers are getting away, although Gino just parked there, but he has quit out instead. And then everybody bouncing off of one another for a little bit of a laugh, and that gives everybody the opportunity to now quit out. So that will essentially cancel the race there and then we'll be setting the grid to get underway with race number one. Although Matthew Lambert has left the room and I believe that may be a little bit of a lobby glitch for him. So Matthew Lambert returning to the room right now. As we see Decast as well doing the same. In fact, my sincere apologies, folks. Decast just arriving at the lobby, so he wasn't able to take part in qualifying. So Decast joining now, and as a result, that will be starting at the back of Division 1. But it's great to see Decast now down at trackside and will be able to participate. And who, who knows what he will be able to achieve once we get underway when the lights go out in race number one. He's going to be a bit of an unknown, of course. Because he comes into here with no qualifying time. So nobody knows what his target times are in terms of race pace or what he can do over a single lap. But we are currently waiting for that grid to be set. And whilst we do, of course, all of our drivers will utilise the time just to get a little bit more warm-up time in, just to analyse where they could have improved on their qualifying laps and what they need to do come the race. As we can see, Lambert making his way down towards turn number one right now. And cold tyres will be a factor in the race down towards turn one. Although Lambert decides to do a little bit of rally cross there rather than taking the corner seriously, which is completely understandable. And now burning those rear tyres, of course. What are these machines being front engine rear wheel drive? The power being delivered through the rear wheels. As Nath does a similar thing of a little bit of side to side weaving before spinning the car out at turn at number two. And now Lambert getting some practice on that standing start by looks of things. Looking to practice at launching the car. A bit of wheel spin there, but a good launch all the same. And now he practices it again. Doing multiple practice starts here. Really looking to try and get the jump of Martin Jalo 9 in the run down towards turn number one. And that is going to be critical, of course, because if he can get ahead of Martin, come at turn one and up into turn three, then he might be able to start pulling a gap. Because you've then got 100R, which is a very difficult corner, particularly on cold tyres, to follow another driver through. As we get the grid now being set by the host. So everybody is in the lobby. The grid is going to be set and everyone will be required to ready up so we can get underway in short order but as we continue to wait on everybody has now readied up I'm going to take a very quick sip of water and place your bets folks what can you expect to happen well we saw how close it was between Mitchell and Sparks back at Catalonia I think what Mitchell will try to do in this one is not fight Sparks too heavily down into turn one if he can stay ahead of Sparks uh, if he can make a move into turn one and then stay ahead coming, say, turns two and three, then I think he will try and hold Sparks up as long as possible. But I think his focus will be more to use Sparks as his pace car and make sure he doesn't lose that pace car to the Division One drivers behind, say, Lambert and Martin, who would love to get Luke Mitchell between them and the other competitor. And indeed, they'd like to try and force him down the order as possible to give them a barrier to the rest of Division One. And we are just checking in with race control right now. We've got nothing else to report currently, so everything seems to be going okay. But here we go then, ladies and gentlemen, a race number one coming at you. Ten minutes. Who's going to be our winner come the end of it? Let's find out. So as we pan down to the grid, it's Sparks on the right, Luke Mitchell on the left-hand side, and behind them, Martin Jallo 9 and Matthew Lambert. Which of our two leaders in Division 1 will take the crown in race number one? Or will it be another Division 1 driver? Let's wait and see. One red light, two red lights, three red lights, four red lights, five red lights. 
And it's lights out and away we go for race number one. All of our drivers getting a reasonable start as the camera will shortly pan around. But Luke Mitchell getting the better start. And Sparks actually bogging down initially. Luke Mitchell all the way up into P1 and going on to the racing line. But you can see Sparks immediately going on the offensive to chase after Luke Mitchell. But contact with Martin Jalo 9. And Lambert is spun there out of turn one. There's a lot of contact. But Lambert being spun. I think there was contact between Sparks and Lambert that triggered that incident. But we'll take a look back. We can see that Sparks going to war with other drivers and getting up into P3 already with Gino trying to go around the outside of him through turn three and it means that Sparks with that line is now vulnerable through 100R as Gino looks to the inside here and you can see behind Nath and Descriver battling as well and Sparks lifting out I think he feels that he was the reason for the instant between himself and Lambert and backing off completely to let Lambert come back into this as we see all of our drivers making their way out of turn seven out and Sparks indeed are lifted off to let Lambert back through as we see Nath going to a town versus D10 Piper and Descriver the free drive is battling for P4 right now and it's a brilliant opportunity for Gino to start pulling away they're free wide down into the hairpin on lap number one and at turn 10 it is Nath who leads them out they're going through the middle of the two and Moses manoeuvre effectively and making it work as we see behind him that you've now got Descriver trying to chase after D10 Piper and get back into that fight for P number four and Lambert has just got past Decast who went a little bit deep there into 13 as Sparks now tries to get on the recovery drive and chase after these guys of course he's not racing for championship points but he'd love every single win Wood Sparks if he can achieve it but you can see Lambert making that recovery drive and starting to build pace as Sparks goes to the move up the inside of Decast Decast looks at the cut back but Sparks parks it on the apex so as they come down towards the timing lines for lap number one and go on to lap number two, it is Luke Mitchell leading by one second over Martin Jalo 9, who is 2.7 seconds clear of Gino Demmer. Gino being ahead of Nath, followed by D10 Piper, then Descriver. Then you've got Matthew Lambert trying to recover. Sparks in P8 and Decast in P9 as they all make their way down towards turn one once again. And we can see that behind Gino, Nath right now under a little bit of pressure from D10 Piper, but not enough pressure to have to go defensive there as he almost runs a bit wide out of turn one. And Lambert but really starting to push on and try to get into the slipstream with these guys ahead of him as you can ride on board with him right now and you'll see as we know he goes through turn three that Lambert has got it all to do to hunt down Martin Jalo 9 and he will look to pick off these drivers one by one over the course of laps and the sooner he can get it done the better of course because he wants to finish as close as possible to Martin cut the end of it as D10 Piper goes a little bit wide there out of turn at number five and in fact goes out to the grass and the car just cuts across Lambert that was incredibly close but Lambert being able to avoid the missing D10 Piper as he went wide and Descriver having a pull run out of turn seven mean that Lambert picks up two places for the price of one over the course of that sequence of quarters and he's up into P5 and chasing after what looks to be Nave as D10 Piper goes defensive versus Sparks out into turn number 10 and as they make their way through the chicane now Sparks all over the back of the D10 Piper machine as they make their way through turn 13 and we can see that Sparks really started to hound Piper and I'm wondering how long it'll be before Sparks goes to the move I reckon it's going to happen into turn 16 because that'll be the best place to do it and if he can get out on the inside he can park it on the apex and you can see Sparks really gain that momentum and Nave as D10 Piper goes wide there and goes very sideways we'll take a look back at a second but Nave all over the back of Gino as we take a look back from Gino's car right now and you can see that Nave getting ever closer are using that slipstream as they're coming up towards the timing line as we switch back to the exterior camera it's now a now drag race they're side by side as they go down towards turn number one and Gino ahead currently although you can see Nave just building a little bit more speed a little bit more every inch matters here and they're going to be side by side into the braking zone Nave on the outside Gino on the inside Gino going defensive here can he now let on the brakes and he does indeed Gino parking it on the apex there and Nave can't find a way around and Lambert leading ahead of the Skyver right now and holding off but Gino not having the momentum out of turn one mean that as he goes into three he's got to go defensive and this is going to cost the pair of them a huge amount of time and enable Lambert, Descriver and Sparks to catch up very quickly albeit Gino is now 5.4 seconds behind Martin Jalo 9 in P2 up the road so that means it's effectively a huge fight brewing for P3 and I don't think there's going to be enough time for this group to catch back up to our race leaders as Gino goes deep into turn 6 Nath also does the same and Lambert in P5 right now is just holding on there behind them and will look to build as much momentum as possible as 
Gino and Nafe both make the same mistake, but Nafe is able to pick up the place for it. And you can see as they come down towards Dunlop Corner now, they make their way in and Sparks looks to remove on the inside of all of them. I don't think he is able to find it that easily on every single driver, but he is up into P6, making the move on Skyver as Nafe under a lot of pressure right now from Lambert as they make their way up into turn 13. Nafe on the inside, Lambert trying to sweep all the way around, so he's got the inside into 14. Can he hold it there on the inside? He does. Now coming up into 15, a very tight apex here. Gino looking to try and use Lambert to give him the space to attack Nafe. He goes for it and he makes the move up the inside. But will Nafe have the inside back into 16? It looks like he can't quite get there. So Gino getting the place back and Sparks making the move on Nafe. But he goes a little bit deep versus Nafe. So now we've got all five cars slip streaming down towards turn number one at once again. And we can immediately see that Lambert going onto the inside line here down the straight here. Trying to avoid giving them all the toe or just giving one driver the toe. And Gino will be absolutely begging for that toe off of Lambert. As you can see, he's got a horde of BMWs behind him trying to get past him. But of course, he's got the defensive toe off of Lambert. So it's just enough. As we jump back to the exterior cameras right now, we can see that Gino under a lot of pressure. And Naif side by side versus Sparks into turn one. And he holds onto the position for now. But of course, with him going defensive, it means he loses the momentum in the run through two and up into three. But as they come through Coca-Cola right now, you can see that Gino under pressure from Naif once again. It's been a back and forth battle between Naif and Gino and Disguive is also in the mix and Sparks is looking to try and find his way past these guys but of course they want to battle as Nafe goes a little bit wide there through four and up into five and Sparks sees the gap and looks for it there's contact between the two of them and Nafe is knocked wide as he goes on the brakes there and I think it's the case as he comes into the corner that Sparks would argue that he was on the inside and Nafe found himself on the outside there is a change of places as we see that Nafe drops down behind Disguive as well so Nafe having a bit of a difficult start right now but he's still in this battle for P3 is Nafe albeit he's now at the back of the pack and and he just needs to calm it down a little bit and get back into the fight, which I'm sure he'll be able to. He's shown that racecraft time and time again. And with Gino holding everybody up in P4 right now, Matthew Lambert is now breaking away. He's one and a half seconds up the road already. And now trying to chase after Martin Jallo 9 with approximately two laps to go. Perhaps a third lap if he's fortunate. As we see that Gino really being hounded by Sparks right now up into 15. And you do have to wonder how long it'll be before Sparks tries to make a move. I think he's going to go for it up into 16. As they come into the breaking zone for the final quarter, will he go for the move? at Panasonic or will he wait? He decides to wait. Being smart here, I think. Although Gino gets a little bit of snap over still on exit there. And as a result, now Sparks will be the closest he's ever been as he's going to get that toe. And it's the drag race down towards turn number one. And Sparks already started to pull past Gino. And he'll be on the inside into turn one as well. So this gives him a brilliant opportunity to make the move stick and then go hunted down after Matthew Lambert. And we can see that Disguiver has broken away from Nate for the time being. The gap between the two of them approximately a second as Sparks is ahead of Gino. And Gino coming in very heavy on the brakes. A little bit of contact there. I think Gino was hoping to break later than Sparks and had to take an emergency move there to avoid hitting the rear end of Sparks' car. But they all make it through safely and now they charge down towards turn number three. And I can report that up front. Luke Mitchell is being reeled in very gradually by Martin Jallo 9. The gap has come down to nine tenths of a second. Martin are looking to potentially pick up the overall win in this race but to do so he's still got to get close enough as we do know that we've got D10 Piper in a crippled car just creeping down and in fact he's had to retire the car from race number one which which is very unfortunate, but we hope to have him back in race number two and decast as well, well off the order there in P8. But looking back up right now, we can see that Lambert has pulled away from the hunt of the drivers behind in the position P3. Although he does have sparks close in on him and he's got a four tenths of a second penalty to burn. But really right now, the focus should be on the battle for the lead. They are going to get one more lap in, in terms of Luke Mitchell and Martin as they made their way through 15 right now. But you can see that Luke has started to lose a little bit of pace and that gap is coming down corner by corner. And will there be a move on the final lap by Martin for the race win? We will wait and see. Of course, Martin will win the Division 1 race here if he is able to stay in P2. But he'll want that win as well. He'll want to start off tonight's round with an overall win. That would feel fantastic for him, given the misfortunes he's had over the course of the season. As he chases down Luke Mitchell on the final lap, they make their way down towards turn number one. The gap now nine tenths once again behind. Lambert is gradually being reeled in by Sparks, but the gap is nine and a half temps and we see behind them that Gino is now being closed in by Disguiver, with Disguiver having the slipstream as they make their way down towards the first corner for the last time of asking, and I'm wondering how close Disguiver will get over the course of sectors one and two, and whether he'll be in a position to make the move through sector three, which is where he'll want to get it done, or at least he'll want to be as close as possible come the final corner, so that way he can drag race past on the finish line as they make their way down then towards turn number three. Can Gino? Gino hold him off. 
Well, definitely at the moment he's going to do so, but that gap is creeping down. It's now less than half a second, and Disguiver is utilising every little bit of track knowledge to get close enough. And I can tell you in the battle for the race lead that Mitchell is now within arm's reach of Martin, as we can see that Martin has got that gap down to what is now four tenths of a second, and into the breaking zone for Dunlop Hairpin they go. As they go into turn number 10, then you can see that Martin all over the back of Luke Mitchell. He's looking for every which way to try and find a way past right now, or at least put Luke Mitchell under enough pressure to psych him into a mistake, but Mitchell is holding strong. He's like concrete right now, focusing on getting this win, the win that was denied to him back at Catalonia in race number two last week. He'll want that win overall, and he's going for it. He's only got one more corner to go. Can Mitchell hold on? It looks as though he's done it all correct so far. As they come into the final corner then, we can see that Martin taking a deep line initially, but then going for the tight line on Apex, and as a result of that, he will have a slingshot out of the final corner, but I think it's too much here. Four tenths separate to he's starting to gain right now but Luke Mitchell is going to hold on and bring home the win in the Alien League and overall for race number one tonight Martin in P2 Matthew Lambert will be coming home in P3 unless he burns that penalty but I don't think he will so he'll be coming home in P4 in the end as he comes across the line Sparks then will be picking it up although actually no he picks up the P4 instead Gino in P5 Disguiver in P6 Nath in P7 and it'll be decast as he comes out of the final corner he'll be bringing it home in P8 and then we do of course have that retirement of D10 Piper who we're hoping to have back in the final race of tonight in race number two as Decast makes his way down towards the finish line right now a brilliant opening race and tons of fighting and tons to talk about in the build up to race number two but the British driver makes his way across the line then congratulations to all of our drivers but in particular to our race winner MMR's Luke Mitchell from the United Kingdom So a brilliant opening race for this evening and subject to any stewards inquiries, here are your race results. Luke Mitchell bringing home the overall win, only three and a half tenths clear of Martin Jallo 9, who will be very happy with that second place. And third place going to Matthew Lambert with that excellent recovery drive, given the incident between himself and Sparks Fury, we believe, on lap number one coming out of turn one into turn two. Sparks coming home in P4 there and the top five being rounded up by Gino Demmer. Now splitting this down into the divisions, our Alien League drivers, we've only got the two of them tonight and that is Luke Mitchell and Sparks Fury. Luke there winning ahead of Sparks and in League One our top three consists of Martin on the top step, Matthew Lambert in P2 and Gino holding on to that P3. The fastest lap being set by Sparks a 44.402 on lap number five. So that is race number one, and now we are waiting for the grid to be set for race number two, which of course will be the reverse grid race while Alien E drives still start at the front of the order. Pardon me, but we do also have our League One drivers who once again will be starting in the reverse grid fashion behind them as we take a quick sip of water. And we do see there the apology from Sparks with regards to the instance that kicked off on lap number one. Sparks being a very respectable driver there. And indeed, of course, all of our drives are looking to be as gentlemanly and as respectful as possible to one another, apologising for mistakes and accepting where things just haven't gone right. And I think the things we can really talk about here was the fact that if we see a pack of drivers all come together, you'll note how if we've got three or four drivers all clustered together on that start-finish straight, the driver at the front of the order in particular is so vulnerable to losing multiple places down into turn one. And indeed, in the final sector as well, if one driver tries to make a move on the lead driver, it almost creates a doorway which everybody behind wants to try and come through before the door is shut again. And we saw that time after time again. And Gino, in the end, did a great job of being able to avoid being exploited by that and instead breaking away from the battle for P3 and leaving behind the battle for P3. Four. and we're we'll hoping that he's able to do a similar thing in a race number two tonight of course or at least that, that will be his target over the course of the races so over the course of the race laps i should really say but we will wait and see of course we've got one more race due to kick off very shortly As we're just really counting down to it now. I'm checking in with race control. Nothing major coming in. I believe we may have D10 Piper returning, although we're not 100% confirmed on that. If not, we will be proceeding with the eight drivers remaining. But 
Luke Mitchell there being congratulated by the majority of the field there for the fact of being able to bring home that race win and really buck the trend where Sparks has been the dominant driver and we have finally seen a different winner. I believe a different winner overall in the races, although definitely a different winner recently in the Alien League. Luke Mitchell bringing home the win that he really wanted. And D10 Piper, I believe, withdrawing from tonight due to some technical issues with the car. So as a result, he will not be able to make a race number two tonight as we see there. See you all next season. Uh, we're getting underway then for race number two. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Another 10 minutes. Who's going to be the winner come the end of it? So as we pan down to the grid this time, we can see it is Sparks on pole alongside him, Luke Mitchell. But behind the big questions where we've got Decast and Nave leading our Division 1 drivers away. And watch out for Lambert and Martin as they'll battle one another and try to slice their way through the field to get the win in Division 1. Every point matters at this point for them. And away they go once again as all of our drivers look to get off the line. Nath bogging down at the start there. You'll notice that he's already lost a position, dropping down to P5, P6 as a result of it. As we see, Lambert had the strongest start of all of them and has made his way all the way up into P4. Lambert really trying to get the charge on here and Gino going defensive versus Lambert. But it hasn't worked out for Gino as he's gone too deep out of turn one and Lambert already up into P4. That is a huge amount of gain on the first corner as they now charge their way through to turn number three. And we can see at the front of camera briefly there that Luke Mitchell trying to hound the back of Sparks to stay with him early on in the race as Gina right now under attack from both Nath and Martin. Martin coming up the inside of Nath there as Nath got pushed a little bit wide trying to go around the outside of Gino through turns four and five at 100R but Gino hold on to the position and Nath now the one in the hunting position after Gino as Martin tries to get the better run out of turns six and seven and now they've got the long run round towards Dunlop quarter here. Now will it be the case that Martin looks to the move here or does he simply wait for the next lap or an opportunity in sector three martin looking for the move he's going for the late break on the inside but that car has not been able to get alongside and as a result nafe retains the position of p6 but you can see that martin looking to emulate matthew lambert a chase after him as nafe picks up a one second penalty for his troubles there and i believe that's track limits at turn number 11 as martin gives him a little bit of contact there but immediately lifts out of it come 13 martin just getting a little bit adventurous on the attack into 13 as we see nafe goes deep and in fact as he burns his penalty martin taking the race in line there the two of them coming back together again and I think the two of them turned into a little bit of battle rivals here over the course of this race, given the fact that we haven't seen them out on tracks together like this that frequently. And now when they do, sparks are flying off the pair of them. And speaking of Sparks, come the end of lap one, it is a side-by-side -side battle between Sparks and Luke Mitchell as they're going down the start finish straight onto lap number two. And which one of them is going to be leading come the end into the breaking zone? Well, Luke Mitchell is going to have the inside into turn number one. Sparks will look to go around the outside or potentially cut back through one on the apex here. Mitchell taking that inside line and he parks on the apex as Matthew Lambert goes extremely deep off of the camera there. And we can look back to our leaders and Mitchell up into the lead for the time being. But what on earth happened to Lambert? We'll find out shortly to Skyver now up into P3 and Lambert versus Gino into turn three here. Lambert on the inside of Coca-Cola corner and he's going to hold that inside. A very defensive move here, but he's got to be so careful as he comes through four and five now as he goes through 100R and he takes the track limits penalty running wide out of turn number three. But you can see how Gino is trying to scythe his way around the outside to the inside of essentially the hairpin at six and seven. But Gino goes a little bit deep and Martin squeezes on the pair of them and picks up two places one as Gino is knocked a little bit wide there it's all kicking off and Gino into the wall as a result of it and I think that was the tiniest bit of contact which sent him spinning as he drops down to P7 and Decast picks up the position of that Gino all the way down to the back of the field as he gets the car recovered and Nath as well having a dismal day in race number two as Decast up into P6 and looking to hold on to that position come the end of it but we can see now Lambert and Martin going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. And immediately Lambert looking for the move up the inside into 15. It's not going to happen immediately. But both of them, of course, will not want to fight too heavily because they'll want to hunt down just Skyver over the course of the next couple of laps. As we can see, they both make their way out of Panasonic. And they now go on to that start-finish straight once again. And Martin under that pressure from Lambert. And then Lambert is going to have the slipstream advantage come the run down towards turn number one. But let's take a look back at what happened 
going into the hairpin and out of it. So we're going to jump on board here with Martin. And what you're going to see, Martin places the car perfectly here for the cutback on both drivers as they battle into turn number six. But as they come out the corner here, I believe there was a little bit of contact which sent Gino out onto the Astro turf there. And as a result of that, the rear end of the car would not stabilize. And that's why Gino went spinning into the wall by being knocked a tiny bit wide as Lambert again wide there out of turn one. But again, I'm not sure if there was contact between Lambert and Martin we were looking at the replay of one battle and I can tell you that Mitchell is still leading ahead of Sparks as Martin now picks up a one second penalty for track limits at turn number three but let's see what happened there with Matthew Lambert so Lambert we're going to see is in the toe and he goes to the very tight line here battling Martin. Martin squeezed him to the inside but then gave him the space and under braking here does Lambert simply get on the power too quickly. He goes a little bit deep here and it looks as though Martin there's contact as Lambert tries to turn himself back in. And I think that's a bit of a situation that may go to the stewards there for further discussion because Matthew Lambert would argue that he was there and had his space out on circuit and Martin essentially accelerated into him. But again that's one for the stewards to find out not for me right now to discuss as we see up front that Mitchell versus Sparks Sparks all over the back of Mitchell as we look back from our race leader and you can see that Sparks is looking for a way past and I think he's trying to gauge where exactly Mitchell is weaker and where he is stronger and he can see that Mitchell leaves the door open into 15 and also into 16 and he will be looking to exploit that come the final lap or when he feels it's the time to strike but right now is not the time for Sparks to strike and behind, we can see that in the battle for P3, Martin all over the back of Disciver right now. Disciver, having been in P3 since the opening lap, is now going to start to fall to Martin, albeit he's going to go defensive here. But we've still got half the run down the straight. And you can see that Disciver in the middle of the circuit, Martin trying to prevent Disciver from coming back onto the racing line until last possible moment. Luke Mitchell versus Sparks here at the front of your camera there. Disciver going heavily defensive into one. Is he able to nail it? He is able to park it on the apex, and Martin has to back out of it as results so Disciver still holding on to the lead and Luke Mitchell is still holding on to the lead in terms of P1 Disciver and P3 of course Disciver the lead division one driver right now so this is for the race winning division one effectively as we can see that Disciver holding off Martin Jallo 9 and Matthew Lambert getting back into the mix he's only eight tenths of a second off of Martin so it's going to be a three-way fight for that P3 slot very shortly Decast right now still 7.6 seconds ahead of Nave and doing a very solid job as we hear that Gino has retired the car to the P in fact, he's parked on the line. There's some technical issues with the car. So I think he'll be just pushing that one across the line come the end of it. But focusing back up front right now, we can see that Sparks versus Mitchell as they come down into the Dunlop corner. There is no change so far. But again, I think Sparks is simply waiting for the right moment to strike. I think he's trying to get all the information on Luke. So that way on the final lap, he can strike and he can do it at the right time to get that race win. As we note that Lambert now is well into the hunt for P3. Although he goes a little bit wide there at 12 and that may be a track limits incursion as well as we see comes up into 15 and he does pick up a one second penalty for that little run wide out of 12 that is a disaster there for Lambert sorry 13 I should say because that means he's now got to get ahead of the guys in front and burn was effectively a 1.4 second penalty that could be rounded up to a two second penalty if he doesn't burn it by the end of the race and he crosses the line but we do have a yellow flag on the start finish straight right now which means none of our drives will be able to overtake because the Gino being parked up there and as a result they have to wait now to go for the move elsewhere on circuit otherwise they'll be having a track uh, sorry, a rule penalty have been applied to them in terms of disobeying yellow flags. As we see Mitchell versus Sparks, they've got two more laps to go. They're on lap number five, and Sparks, again, seeing that Mitchell decides to go defensive there, and he's just running a little bit wide off the corner, and Disguiver, meanwhile, is having to defend constantly as Martin is looking for every which way past, and I believe Lambert has used the opportunity to burn his penalty once again. He's got rid of that penalty, so now he can hunt these guys down. He'll know they'll fight one another and pull themselves back into him, so he doesn't have to worry too too much as they make their way through 100 r and up into the hairpin they go up into turn six the sky the inside martin looking for the cutback but the sky a place in that car on the apex but he's not able to curb martin's momentum enough here and it means as they go through the double right handers of eight and nine down towards the dunlop corner you can see that martin has got the momentum but can he find a way through the sky going on to the racing line but then closing the door a little bit but he can't close it too much as martin's got the momentum to be there and martin with a bold move up the inside there gets up into P3 
and Disguiver losing out in the end, just choosing not to go defensive early enough, I would argue, in order to dissuade Martin from putting his car at the inside. And now it is the case that Disguiver has to hunt down the Briton ahead of him. But of course, they've only got two corners to go before they've got the long run down towards turn one. And Disguiver's now got Matthew Lambert behind him. And oh, he must be holding his hands together right now, thinking, Matthew, just let me stay behind Martin come the final corner. And then I'll let you get the double toe and you can go for the move after the guy ahead. Alternatively, let me hold on and chase after Martin instead. As we see again, we've got yellow flags here. So our drivers will not be able to overtake. But as Martin is weaving on the straight a little bit to try and break the toe, they go on to the final lap. And there's one more lap to settle things. As up front, we can see that Sparks immediately now going for the move on Luke Mitchell into the braking zone for one. He's up the inside of Mitchell. And as he goes into the corner here, Luke goes a little bit deep. And in the battle for P3, we can see Lambert up the inside of the Skyver. And Lambert, I think, has got it done. He drifts a little bit under the exit. But he's able to get the oversteer under control. And he's up into P4. But will Disguiver come back at him as we see that Sparks is ahead of Luke Mitchell who has a half second penalty and Martin in P3 right now he's got Lambert behind him and Lambert would love to take that place off of Martin so that way he gets the maximum points for Division 1 come this race and essentially balances out and the gap between himself and Martin does not close up as much as it can come the end of tonight's proceedings but will that be the case? I think Martin's got a nice gap to Lambert right now but he has got to burn a small penalty of one tenth per second to get across that finish line nice and secure in that P3 slot and we can see that Sparks has immediately broken away from Luke Mitchell so it's all going to come down to this battle for P3 in the end of it and I think all three drives are a little bit spaced out for anything to happen into Dunlop but what about the final sector it always offers overtaking opportunities right at the end and we can see Lambert is being reeled in a little bit here by Disguiver as they all make their way through 13 all three drives getting through there nice and cleanly and up front meanwhile we can see that Sparks is just a little bit ahead of Luke Mitchell Mitchell not close enough to affect a pass here as they make their way into the final corner but behind them you can see that Martin is clear enough of Lambert will Disguiver look for a move up the inside I don't think so so it's going to be a drag race to the line and in the drag race for the win it will be Sparks here who's going to come across the line 1.2 seconds ahead of Luke Mitchell making it a race win but not the perfect evening for Sparks tonight as Mitchell comes home in P2 and then it will be Martin who holds on to P3 in the end ahead of Matthew Lambert and Skyver in P5 and I think Martin will be joyous at the fact he's picked up the maximum possible points he could for Division 1 tonight as Decast comes across the line in P6 holding off the late charge in Nath of course as he makes his way across the line Nath in P7 and then it will be Gino Demmer who comes across in P8 with the technical issues with the car as he pushes the car across the line to complete our racing order congratulations to all of our drivers but this time as well to our race winner Sparks Fury from the United Kingdom What a cracking second race of the evening and finale to our races for tonight. But here are your race results subject to any steward's inquiries. Sparks 3 bringing home the race win. Only 2.4 seconds this time ahead of Luke Mitchell. And in third place going to Martin Jello 9. Matthew Lambert picking up P4 and rounding off our top five was Disguiver. The fastest lap going to Sparks on lap number six of 44.336. The fastest lap we've seen all evening, I believe, although we may have seen a slightly faster one in race number one. As for in terms of the Alien League, will Sparks finishing ahead of Luke Mitchell there? And in Division 1 in race number two, Martin picking up the win ahead of Matthew Lambert and Disguiver missing out on a P2 or a P1 there, but still doing a fantastic job to finish in what was P3 in the Division 1 race. So that is our races for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Some fantastic racing by all of our drivers and indeed setting things up for the grand finale tonight uh, sorry the grand finale and next week we've got that final race of the season and you won't want to miss it season 20 whilst it's been wrapped up for our alien league drivers we still have the championship battle between martin jallo 9 and matthew lambert to resolve in division one and you won't want to miss it but until then I wish you all the best. I wish you a wonderful week ahead. And remember to stay safe, stay well, stay smiling. But most importantly, stay on track. Good night.